it's currently uh, March 22nd, and, and it's we've had beautiful weather. We've had a terrible spring, but here in the last week or so, we've had beautiful weather. So we've went out. I went out and started burning quite a bit of my ground. Um, stuff that I'll burn, you know, depending on on where it's at, one to every three years. And the more brush that I want to take out, I'll burn it every year. Um, sometimes the brush is too advanced. And what I'll do, and it's something I like to do to keep different stages uh, of regrowth, is if I feel like my timber or my sprouts are getting too thick and my burn didn't take care of them, let them bud out, hit them with a good shot of 2,4-D. Most of the time that'll take care of them. Sometimes you need to use another product, Remedy, uh, Pasture Guard, something like that will help take out those bigger sprouts. But with, with a burn, you really release so much, the grasses and the forbs and and all those things you really kick start the growing year and, and it's not only deer but it makes great turkey hunting areas also turkeys love about two weeks after a burn or even a week everything starts to green up and they will absolutely just terrorize a great burn field the uh this year i'm trying something new um i've always prepped my uh my native grass ground um it, typically in the fall i'll get it worked up kind of get it ready um let it kind of settle throughout the winter, and then I'll spray in the spring and then no-till. This year, I actually went with a kind of a different method. I'm pretty excited to try it, um, where I, I basically did no fall prep. I burnt here in the last couple days. I'm gonna go in with a mix of Roundup and Plateau. I'm gonna spray here, so after my burn, I'll let my regrowth get six inches high or so, and I'll spray it with the, the Roundup and the Plateau get a good kill on it, and then I'm gonna just no-till in my native grasses. And, and the studies that I've read on that, the plateau really helps it tremendously in keeping the competition from, from growing and, and killing out that native grass. It's pretty weak when it gets started. However, once it's established, it's, it's I mean, it's almost impossible to kill, thankfully. Um, so this year I'm gonna go with a, a stand of 30% a switchgrass, 30% big blue stem, and then 15% little blue stem, 15% Indian grass, and 10% cytos gamma. And with that, eventually that switchgrass is really gonna kinda take over over say the next 10 to 12 years. But I'll have a great stand of switchgrass, which is gonna help, it's gonna keep my cover there all winter, but I'll have great forbs and, and different things for the deer to, to browse on throughout the summer. And, and that is the key for me so with Kansas, I can't hunt uh, past the end of December. So my focus really is September, October, November, and December. And we don't typically get a lot of snow. So up north, you may want to go with a heavier load of switchgrass. And, and that'll much better withstand the, the heavy snow loads. We don't have to deal with that here. So I can go with a, a lighter mix of switchgrass. However, it still provides that cover six to eight foot tall, makes the deal feel safe and secure. But going with less switchgrass, I give them more options for bedding areas. And that is kind of the key for me. For, I, I want, I kind of want to benefit everything. I, I'm not just strictly for bedding area. Eventually, once these plots are established, I'll go in and create a 10 to 15 foot wide uh, clover plot. Just kind of a trail plot that's, they make great kill plots and the deer I don't do them in a straight line I'll do them in a slight slight kind of an S curve kind of a snaky pattern and what that does is it allows the deer not to be able to see too far down the plot so if a buck during the rut is out checking does he has to walk the entire food plot to actually check it or if the winds right um, you know if the winds a different direction maybe he can just get on the downwind side of it and smell it entirely um, I try to set it up to where the winds I want to hunt they need to walk the food plots uh, to be able to actually check them. And I think that's key. So, but that's gonna be three to four more years down the road um, and then I'll get that established. One of the uh, a misconception I think for a lot of people is if you're going to use your native grasses for a bedding area, that you need large pieces of acreage for them. I typically do anywhere from three to five acres and I found that when you separate out your deer herd like that, you actually increase the carrying capacity of your land so that you don't have four or five doe family groups competing to bed in one area. 
you can actually do little chunks here and there anywhere from you know i do three to five acres you can do one to one to five one to ten acres however big of a piece of ground you got and kind of proportion it to your property but you can you spread those deer family those dope typically doe family groups out and, and you'll be amazed how many more deer are actually carrying your property and then you can focus you can know where those does are going to bed and then you can go create buck bedding area somewhere else on your property typically going to be a little further off your food plots you know where your does are going to bed say 50 to 100 yards your bucks are going to want to bed 150 to 200 they're not social animals they don't want to go hang out with all the ladies they want to be off by themselves they want to bed securely but they don't want a bunch of deer around them so if I can create what I know is going to be doe bedding, I also know where I can create buck bedding.